Hey everybody, welcome to guided assignment for chapter five. Um, uh, again, like the last one, there's gonna be a lot of scrolling. So sorry about that. Um, sometimes it's easier for us to use a little bit of technology and see if we can reduce the amount of scrolling we have to do. So I'm actually gonna use my snipping tool and cut out these uh, all of this data for our transactions. And I'm gonna stick that over here, back to my problem here. And now I think I can have all my info over here on the right and my transactions on the left. So all we have to really do here is journalize the entries to record the transactions uh, for the Green Lawn Supply Company. Um, so on July 1st, we sold merchandise on account to Landscapes Company for 33,450. The terms were FOB shipping point, net EOM. That means the net or whole amount is due at the end of the month. The cost of goods sold was 20,000. All right, so anytime we have a sales transaction, uh, we have to record uh, two different things. The first thing we have to record is the amount of money, uh, or in this case, accounts receivable we, uh, we earn. So we're gonna debit accounts receivable and we're gonna credit sales, which is a revenue account. So we always record the revenue, um, and that's the total amount that we earn, 33,450. 33, the other side of the transaction that we have to record is our cost. So it's gonna be our expense, which is a debit to cost of goods sold, and a credit to inventory because our inventory is going down. So think of that, every time you sell something, your inventory goes down, why? Because it's leaving your business and going to the customer. And so you have to record the cost of the inventory. And this one, it was 20,000. As a cost of goods sold or an expense of making that sale and record your inventory decreasing by that much, while at the same time recording that you received money, or in this case, you received the, prom the promise to receive money in the future, accounts receivable, uh, and its revenue. So every time there's a sales transaction, you have those four things going on at least. Accounts receivable or cash going up, and sales revenue going up, cost of goods sold going up, and inventory going down each time. All right. On July 2nd, we sold merchandise for $86,000 plus 8% sales tax to retail cash customers. Um, so here we have to account for the sales tax. So there's a couple of ways people like to do this. Some people like to figure out separately how much the, the, uh, the sales revenue is and then the, the tax, other people do it together. So I'll, I'll kind of step you through this. So again, this is a cash customer, so our cash is going up. And then our sales revenue account will be increasing because we sold some stuff. But also we're collecting some sales tax. So we're going to record that as a sales tax payable. We collect that and hold on to it. And usually we pay the state government at the end of the month. That's kind of the process it goes through. So if our sales were $86,000 plus 8% sales tax, we could say, Sales was 86,000, 8% of that, so 86,000 times 0 0.08, that's gonna be the amount of sales tax payable. And then the two added together would be the total amount of cash we collected. So 86,000 plus 6,880 is $92,880. Then in addition to this, this is the, again, the amount we received from the customers and, and now we have to record the costs. So we're gonna have our cost of goods sold and our sales taxes, sorry, and our inventory going down by the cost of goods sold, which was 51,600. We want, we can do a check, make sure we're on the right track. And it looks like we're all good. Uh, it's, it's good when the teacher's on the right track. Not to say I don't make mistakes, but you know I've done this a few times, so I should make fewer mistakes. On July 5th, we sold merchandise on account to the Peacock Company, $17,500, terms FOB destination. 
Just remember FOB, freight on board destination, means that we retain ownership of this property until it arrives at the customer's destination. Our terms here are 110 at 30. So there's a 1% discount if they pay within 10 days. And the cost of goods sold was 10,000. Up here, it tells us in the instructions, which I kind of skipped over, um, Green Lawn uses the net method under the perpetual inventory system. That means we assume, when we say we use the net method, we assume all of our customers are going to take any discount we offer them. So we're not gonna record the full 17,500, we're gonna record um, 17,500 minus a discount. So you can do that one of two ways. You can either take 17,500 and then subtract 17,500 times 0 0.01, which would give you 17,500 minus 1% 1 of 17,500. Or you could also just say, well, a 1% discount means someone would only pay 99% of the full price. So you could say 17,500 times 0.99. And that tells us the amount that the customer is actually going to pay so long as they pay within the discount period. Again, this is a on account. So we're going to have accounts receivable and we're going to have sales, which is our revenue account. And the other side of this transaction is our cost of goods sold and our inventory, um, which was 10,000 on this, this one. July 8th, we sold merchandise for $112,000 plus 8% sales tax to retail customers who used Visa cards. Uh, the cost of goods sold was 67,200. Um, so when someone uses a Visa card, we still record that as cash. Oh, it looks like I missed a zero here. here. All right. So we still record that as cash. Because it usually comes to us within a day or two and we just record it as, as cash. So July 8th, 112,000 plus 8% sales tax. So we're gonna have cash, we're gonna have sales revenue, and we're gonna have sales tax payable. Our sales tax, I mean, our sales will be 112,000. And our sales tax payable, 112,000 times 0 0.08, 8%, 8,960. And the total cash we received would be the 112,000 for the sales plus the 8,960 we collected for sales tax. So 120,960. Again, we're gonna record the cost of goods sold on this transaction and our inventory going down by the cost, which was 67,200. Check our work, make sure we're on track, and we're good. Okay, July 13th, sold merchandise to customers who use MasterCards, $96,000. Cost of goods sold was $57,600. So we're going to record cash and sales of $96,000. And then we're going to record cost of goods sold, inventory going down. Uh, was 57,600. July 14th, we sold merchandise on account to Loeb, I guess, company. Uh, $16,000, terms FOB shipping point, 110 net 30. The cost of goods sold was $9,000. Okay, so again, we're going to, let's see, what do we say? on account, so it's gonna be accounts receivable. And sales, since we offered them a discount of 1%, then we're gonna figure out if it was a $16,000 sale minus 1%, I would say 16,000 times 0 0.99, so 15,840. And then we're also going to record the cost of goods sold and inventory reduction of 9,000. Did 
check our work. Make sure I didn't make any mistakes. Looks like we're good. All right, July 15th, we received a check for the amount due from Peacock Company for the sale on July 5th. So if I just scroll up to July 5th, we'll see that Peacock Company owed us 17,325. So we're just gonna show our cash going up and our accounts receivable from Peacock going down for that amount, 17,325. Pretty easy, July 16th, issued a credit, credit memo to Loeb Company for merchandise uh, with an invoice amount of $3,000 returned from the sale on July 14th. The cost of the merchandise return was 1800. So this one's a little tricky because we'd be, we'd be tempted to do $3,000 there. But if we go back and look at the July 14th sale to Loeb, we'll see that we applied a discount in here. So we're gonna to have to apply that same discount to the amount we are crediting back to them, okay? So um, first I'll start with the accounts and we are gonna do, we're gonna take this off of our sales so it's no longer revenue. And then we're gonna do customer refunds payable. Then, we're gonna look at the amount. So it was $3,000, right? Was the amount of the return. And when we sold it to them, there was a 1% discount. So the amount we're gonna return here or the amount we're gonna do refund is 3,000 times 0.99 or $3,000 less a 1% discount of 29.70. This is a little confusing and it's easier to make a mistake sometimes. So if you do, don't get too upset. That's why we have checks. Um, the cost of the merchandise returned was $1,800. So we don't worry about discounts there on the cost side. Okay, that'll be the full amount. Um, but we're actually going to return these to inventory. Actually, now I'm getting confused. Let's take a look. We'll check it and make an adjustment if I made a mistake. Uh, no big deal, right? I think we're going to call this let's just take a look we'll figure it out make sure all right so you can see up here on the top one i got the accounts wrong so let's take a look at it and talk through why it's wrong and that will probably help us figure out how to fix it so what we're dealing with here is we had a return, right? And so we need to return the money uh, back to our customers. Um, the customer hasn't paid us yet. So really, I think what we're gonna do here is we're gonna reduce our accounts receivable, right? So they don't have to pay us as much. And then up here, I think we're gonna call this a customer refund payable. Um, Mm, I don't like that either. Let's check it again. Okay, well, that's how it is. So, um, so let's talk through why that is. I guess because so what we're doing is we're reduce, reducing accounts receivable. So they no longer owe us this $2,970. Um, and then there's no refund payable here because um, because we never received the money. So we're also would be redoing, re reducing any payable account. We would use this account as people return stuff to us and we owe them refunds. It's pretty normal for companies to, to put these into a customer refund payable account. And then once a month or once a week, depending on their volume, they'll write checks or, or disperse the money out and then reduce that. In this case, we're reducing that refund payable because, well, there was never any cash received. So we're just taking it straight off of the accounts receivable. Yeah, I told you that one's a little confusing. All right, July 18th, we sold merchandise on account to Jennings Company, 11,350 terms FOB shipping point, 210 net 30, paid 475 for freight and added it to the invoice and the cost of goods sold was 6,800. So there's a lot going on there. 
So let's just break it down. Uh, the first thing is we have this 11,350 with a 2% discount. So the first thing I'm gonna go ahead and record um, is my accounts receivable from Jennings and my sales revenue, which is gonna be the 11,350 less a 2% discount. So I'll say 11,350 times 0.98 or 98% of that total amount. 11,123. The second thing I'll deal with is this $475 freight that we added to our invoice. So again, since we added to the invoice, they're gonna owe us for it. And we paid it. So it should be our cash going down. And then the last thing is gonna be us dealing with our costs on this. So cost of goods sold was 6,800. So cost of goods sold and inventory, 6,800. Let's check that, make sure we got it all right. And we did. All right, on July 24th, we received a check for the amount due from the load company. All right, so if we have, well, go up to the July 14th transaction, you can see we had a debit in our accounts receivable, 15,840. Then on the 16th, we credited that account 2,970. So we can figure out the total amount they owe us, 15,840 minus 2,970. They owe us $12,870. So our cash will go up and our accounts receivable for low will go down by 12,870. On July 28th, we received a check for the amount due from Jennings company for the sale on July 18th. So again, Jennings, we can see we had a debit to that accounts receivable of 11,123. And then another debit to accounts receivable for the shipping of 475. So 11,123 plus 475. They owe us 11,598. Again, we'll show cash going up and accounts receivable going down. Check our work. July 31st, we paid Black Lab Delivery Service $8,550 for merchandise delivered. Uh, under our shipping terms. So um, this is just gonna be a delivery expense and our cash going down, $8,550. Another July 31st transaction, we received a check for the amount due from Landscapes for the sale of July 1st. So we could go all the way back up to July 1st the landscapes owed us $33,450. I don't think there were any other transactions with them. So it's going to be, whoops. And again, this is going to be our cash going up and our accounts receivable for that company landscapes going down. Check it, make sure we're on the right track. We are. August 3rd, we paid Hayes Federal Bank $3,770 for service fees for handling MasterCard and Visa sales. So we're gonna just debit credit card expense, credit cash. And then on August 10th, we paid 41,260 to state sales tax division for taxes owed on sales. So we're gonna debit sales tax payable and credit cash. And that should do it 100%. So um, again, I think the most confusing part is up here where we're dealing with these, with these returns and things like that. Uh, but overall, it's pretty straightforward once you get used to the concepts of, of uh, I guess, dealing with with the, there's always these kind of 
two different transactions, the, the, the amount you receive from the customer and the, your cost for all of these. And then also the idea of dealing with the discounts and things like that. So I hope that was useful to you and uh, good luck as you work through the rest of the problems this chapter.